twice in one day. We just hop right in that queue, and there we go. We got a Soaring and a Mox Emerald. The juice is loose. It's definitely Soaring. Isn't that weird? How Soaring is, like, better than a lot of the power. I mean, it just doesn't commit us to a color, right? Like, if we end up being colorless, or any, any color other than green is what I meant, then the Mox Emerald is just mm -hmm. a Soaring that uh, gives you one less mana. So someone's got a nice, gonna get a nice little treat. They're gonna get a nice little Mox Emerald. <sighs> Wheel of Fortune and Dak Faden and Othari and Remand. I like all of these cards. See, and if we took that Emerald, we'd be like, well, I guess I'll take Augur of Autumn. We probably wouldn't have, but you know, we could have, you know. Crab or no balls. Grandma, you're getting real spicy in your old age. <sighs> kind of just like Dak Faden here. Wheel of Fortune is draw seven, though. You know, you ever, you ever Wheel of Fortune? I'm going to Dak Faden. That guy steals artifacts. You ever stolen someone's artifact before? They hate it. They absolutely hate it. Oh, hold on. Let me actually refresh this. There we go. So long, chat. See you later, chat. Preordain, Thieving Skydiver, Brainstorm, Magda. So I like Preordain, I like Thieving Skydiver. I think we're just going with Preordain here. That's a that's a juicy boy. Brainstorm's okay. Um, if we don't get any fetches, which I feel like people people are taking fetches quite high. Uh, I don't want to be stuck with like a Brainstorm with no real like way to you know, mitigate our, mitigate our draws if we're... But yeah, I mean, Preordain, Dak, Fade, and Sol Ring. I'm pretty okay with these three. What's the deal with Astral Dragon? What's the deal with Astral Dragon? I never see that card wheel, but I've never seen it cast either. Someone cast it against me in my very last draft. Wow, this pack is a real sweet one. We got this Oko here. We also have Archon of Cruelty, a counter spell, a Snaparuski, Currency Converter, Ragavant. This pack is nuts. Like, even Days, Parallax Wave, and Life Death are fantastic. The worst cards in this pack are, like, Escape and Soul Guide Lantern. And if I take Oko and Splash Green, I would also just be fine if this wheels. Um, I've also flashed it in. I mean, at worst, it's, like, two, three, three flyers that copy permanents that are in play. You know, so you can get, like, an extra Planeswalker or an extra, you know, Mana Crypt or something. Like, yeah, I'm just taking Oko here. I mean, I would have been fine with Counterspell as well, but I mean, like, <sighs> Counterspell is the consistent pick. Oko is the power pick, I think. Oh, a Noble Hierarch. That goes quite well with Oko and Preordain, and even Deck Faden. It adds the blue and the green. Ledger Shredder is cool. Uh, Lorian Revealed is pretty good, especially if we get... Um, like a Triland. Ketria Triome, for example. CJ Psychosis, thank you for the resub, buddy. Really appreciate it. That pack was definitely the definition of the world is your oyster. I think it's this guy or this guy. I think we're going to take Lorian. I don't really feel like leaning on green enough to have to play a one mana green creature. Especially with having passed the, the Mox Emerald, I'm, I kind of feel like we can put people into green and not and not have it be us. And I'm totally fine just splashing this off of like a breeding pool that we can get with Lorien Revealed or something.
Lorien is just a mono blue fetch land that you put the land in your hand instead of in play. The one ring and ponder and birds and sail into the west. This is a pack, man. Definitely taking the one ring here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Also, I love this guy, as as you guys probably know. This pack is is pretty good as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two cards are coming back. I mean, it's definitely going to be Putrid Imp and either Bomat Courier or Thirst. I think it's Bomat Courier. I think Imp and Bomat Courier are coming back. I've also been impressed with Engine. That card's been super sweet every time I've, I've had it. Just looking two cards deeper every turn while making a 1-1, one, one, while having a, an 8-8 eight, eight threat on the board. Like, it's a discard outlet for so many strategies. It lets you see more cards. It puts creatures on the board. It just does a lot. If it was like draw one, discard one, it would be terrible. The fact that it's like draw two, discard one, like you're just, it's just, there's so many spells that are already doing that that are super playable. I do like an, an Uro. Euro. I think it's Euro. Kappa Cannoneer could actually be decent. We already have Soul Ring and One Ring and Dak Faden. Let's take Kappa Cannoneer. I'm trying not to be this heavy green and being able to um, escape this guy for double... Actually, Retrofitter Foundry is really good too. All right, I'm going to take the Cannoneer. I think Cannoneer is really good. Um, Yeah, having, having the escape cost be double green is kind of a... Kind of off-putting. Even this pack is really sweet. Jeez. <laughs> Rafelos, Fallen Shinobi, Ulamog, Nissa. I mean, there's nothing great for us, unfortunately. And Fallen Shinobi is pretty good. We also don't have to be red here. Yeah, I'll just take the Fallen Shinobi and we'll see where that lands. Like right now we have Fallen Shinobi and Dak Faden and Oko. We can either be Grixis, we can be um, shit, Teamer, or we can be Sultai. Like we can just pick two of these and go with those. Engine is that good shit. Engine is that good shit. <laughs> Oh, oh Rafine's Tower. Interesting. It's only two of our three three colors. And that's if we're being Fallen Shinobi. Did you look at that crab game? <laughs> Am I? Is that right? Uh, I think Rafine's Tower is probably better than Copper Line Gorge. Just because we can search for it with uh, Lorien Revealed. It's funny because I'm such a big fan of all three of these cards. What if we like, I mean, we can splash multiple of them, right? We could just be like blue splashing for like all these one mana bombs, these one off color bombs. Oh God, I really like Othari. I'm really surprised this came back. Here's a white land. Here's a black red land, which we can take if we are going Grixis. And this is also a good Grixis land. Yeah, we'll take the Haunted Ridge. Maybe we don't play Oko. Well, I don't care about Razor Verge Thicket. Dark Ritual is pretty good, though, especially if we're playing the black, which it looks like we might be. Mystical Tutor doesn't get a ton of things. I think it's just Dark Ritual. That card's just good. Authority is another solid card. Yeah, that, that card's definitely been in my cube for, well, probably since I've seen it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to see if I can make an um hello emote tonight. The problem is it has to be super small. Like the emotes have to be like 12 pixels by 12 pixels. So I actually think it's probably best to break it up. Oh, wow. I'm really surprised Currency Converter came back. That's really shocking to me. So it might have to be two or three emotes. Like, um, hello, and then question marks. We could do KD1, KD2, KD3. I also need... 
picture good pictures of the boys. So I can make some Oh, uh Trigger Mage is actually great with currency converter and soaring. Yeah, that's totally fine. Make some wall Wally and Watt City motes. That's why you'll see like streamers have certain phrases and that they're broken up into multiple emotes because the visibility just goes down. What? What? We have a Rafine's Tower. I'm probably just playing this, man. Um, Bomat Courier was in there. What was the other card I said was going to be in there? Which I think was significantly worse than Bomat Courier. There was one card I was sure of. And we get the Restless Bivouac. Imp, Putrid Imp. Someone took Putrid Imp over Shorikai. These people ain't got no damn sense. I do like a Delta. Yeah, this pack is definitely Delta. <laughs> what? Okay, that's actually hilarious. That's pretty good. Yeah, all right, we're going to take Delta. This pack's pretty rough. I don't care about Time Twister right now. Oh, what up, Cabalin? Long time no see, buddy. I was hoping this was a breeding pool, then we can search for it with our polluted Delta. But alas, twas not. I do like a Palantir. <laughs> I also like pest infestation. We might put Oko back on the menu. This is like five color blue, man. Pest infestation's insane. Palantir is honestly nice because it's colorless and it gives us a bunch of extra cards. We do have Kappa Cannoneer though, right? So let's kind of lean into that. Zagoth Triome seems pretty good. Mana Vault seems pretty good. Boof. Big boof. I think we're just taking Mana Vault here. Mana Vault into like Kappa Cannoneer or Fallen Shinobi or something, or even Genesis Engine if we're still playing that, is just really good. Zeotor's Proving Ground, Swamp Mountain Forest. That's interesting, because that one land lets us cast all three of these. Uh, definitely love for Baby Teferi, but I don't think Baby Teferi in, in white is better than Mana Vault when we have no white cards except for Genesis Engine. This is like our, this is like our, uh, <laughs> this is the splash area over here. I kind of like that Proving Ground lets us play all three of these off of the one land. We just get one proving ground and we just get to play all three of these. <sighs> Plus it's also a swamp. So like it is one of our main colors if we are black. I'm going to risk that for the biscat. Oh, uh, I think I do want time warp here actually. Karn is also decent making guys for Kappa Cannoneer. Taking extra turns is pretty cool, though. I'm going to take an extra turn. Like, we already have Soul Ring, Mana Vault. Like, we have a, a couple good ways to... Uh... We're the Biscat. I don't know, man. I love a good Bisque. Specifically of the tomato variety. Not a big fan of the lobster variety, though. Just not my thing, you know? I'm just not a lobster man. Well, we're definitely taking Underground Sea. Because it looks like we're leaning towards... Black blue as base. Base. Oh, I'm having a good time. We're having a good time here. Okay. Uh, don't care about these white lands. I think it's just him to Torok. Yeah, it's him to Torok. And then we can put this in the sideboard. We can assume... Well, God. It's so easy to cast off this Rafine's Tower, though, you know? 
You don't like eating lobster because you're shellfish. I feel like I'm the opposite of, I feel like I don't like eating lobster because I'm not shellfish, right? Like I, I, I let them have their, their lives. Ash, there's the astral dragon. There's a worm coil. We don't really have a way to put that guy into play. Also, we got Mana Vault and we do have Trinket Mage, which makes it even better. Um, I do like Brazy Bee. Scrubland is also nice because it's just a swamp that lets us cast Shurokai Genesis Engine. Yeah, nothing's coming back from here. I think it might be Scrubland. Jeez. I I'm going to take Scrubland because Genesis Engine is an artifact, and I think that really benefits our deck. Especially with, like, Kappa Cannoneer. I also think we have a lot of good playables in here. And I think making our mana base as good as it can be is just going to be really beneficial to our to our deck. I mean, I think being blue-black and splashing for, like, one white, one red, and one green card is totally fine. Especially when we have the double tri land to do it. If we can get another blue, well, actually a black fetch land would be better because then we can get both Rafine's Tower and Proving Ground. Um, I do like Apparition the most here, but I'm not going to take a double white card. We'll just take Spell Pierce because I think it's really good. Golos was, was in here. I did see a Golos. I do not know where he has since gone. We also would like some some early guys to to trigger this Shinobi. Like a Baleful Strix, maybe. They took Bitter Blossom out, which is sad, because I thought it was one of the one of the better um, enablers for both Recurring Nightmare and for Fallen Shinobi. I feel like every time I get this, I go at least 2-1, so we'll see. Fingers crossed. Goblin Engineer is another card I've been kind of impressed with in the cube. I think he's, I think he's, the, the combos it enables is, are pretty cool. My god, it's 30 degrees outside. Every time I want to go in the garage and do work, I'm like, maybe it'll be a little warmer today. Just a little bit. And it's like 30 degrees, and I'm like, it was not. None of these cards are super exciting. We don't have anything to reanimate. We could just show and tell and hope to get like an Emrakul or something gross. Enchantment land or artifact or creature. Could also get bring to light. <laughs> actually, I'm going to take this bring to light. We have two tri lands that actually turn it on. Well, today there's going to be a high. Well, today that was actually today. Saturday there's a high of 51, which is pretty nice. No snow on the horizon for the foreseeable future, which is nice. Oh my god, Tefri came back? Little Tefri came back. So this is like all the busted three-mana Planeswalkers, right? Yeah, I'm glad I took that Scrubland. This feels like a pretty sweet bring to light deck, actually. <laughs> Did everyone get a decent helping of mail loaded meatball subs for Christmas? Jesus God. I hope not. Uh, this pack's pretty rough. I'll just take Seething Song. No. No, don't look at it. Oh, don't look at it. I have no idea how Tefri came back. I think people just don't like blue white. Elite Spellbinder is really good. Lotus Cobra, we're not going to play. Paradoxical Outcome, probably not playing that either. I 
This is 19 playables, and we have a good amount of lands here as well. Fallen Shinobi is looking the most questionable, unfortunately, just because of very few enablers. That's okay, we got a whole other pack to go. Being able to bring to light Time Warp, Fallen Shinobi, Genesis Engine, One Ring, any of the three Planeswalkers is pretty good. I would love a Valky for this deck if we're going to play Bring to Light. This is where someone's like, you passed Valky in pack one. I'll be like, oh no, what have I done? A terrible mistake was made. I'll sure, I'll take an Adeline. <laughs> I mean, we're getting really good white cards late. If we took Blade Splicer or Mother of Runes, like we would literally have Spellbinder, Adeline, Mother of Runes, or see, like our last four picks were just, our last five picks were just really good white cards. Plus we have Rafine's Tower, Scrubland, Delta, and Underground. Like we have really good cards for the Esper deck. And then we're just splashing for Dac, Bring to Light, and Oko. That's all. <laughs> it's, it's just five color Esper, right? <sighs> I mean, with our mana base, it's definitely five color, no problems. Oh, yes, a good old City of Brass. A classic. <sighs> and now we wait. The waiting. I do like Zeotaurus Proving Ground being a black source, which is one of our main colors, is very nice. And we're not splashing anything with double colors. And nothing that we're splashing is two color, two off colors. So we're not splashing like an Othari that's an that's an off white and an off red. Okay. Okay. Uh God, grief is really good. It might just be grief here. Yeah, grief feels good. Grief is nice because you can go Grief into Fallen Shinobi and getting your Grief back is really cool. For some reason, I just kept humming It's Raining Michael B to myself at FM. <laughs> it's very clearly your fault. Grief doesn't feel that great, babe. You're right. You are 100% right. We also passed the Dark Depths last, last pack and now we have a Thespian stage in here. So I'm going to take Grief because despite not feeling good, well, shit. <laughs> you know, we just got done saying like none of our none of our uh, our splashes are are two off colors. <sighs> this pack is pretty sick, actually. Primeval Titan, Subtlety's good. Stormcarved Coast would be great if it came back. Deluge is good. Fable Sneak Attack Fourth Year Lingus. I, I, I'm not going to, I can't pass a fourth year Lingus. We just have too many good lands to enable it. I will, however, take almost any fetch land we come across now. I have an eyelash that's bugging me. You ever have an eyelash that you just feel like is totally loose and ready to come out? <sighs> Jetmere's Garden. I don't think I, I'd rather have a bad lands, I think. Especially since we just took a red card. I just don't want to. I just want a third tap land. I don't think. But we did just take a red card, so I feel I feel okay about taking a bad land so that we can search for. I definitely don't want to cut green when we have Bring the Light and Oko. <laughs> like, those are two very powerful cards. Plus, I also have not gotten a chance to play with Bring to Light yet, so I'd kind of like to do so.
Also, cutting green is not really my style. Like, that's, like my play style is definitely, hey, look, bring to light fourth year lingus, Dak Faden, Oko, Shorakai Genesis Engine, Fallen Shinobi. Let's play all of these. Oh, Mox Diamond actually seems really good for us. Wow, it's an artifact. We can we can improvise with uh, Kappa Cannoneer because it's an artifact. We can just tap it to make us make him cost one less. We can also get it with Trinket Mage. Yeah, that's that's a good pickup here. Yeah, that seems really good. Plus, we have Mana Vault, Soul Ring. Like we have a lot of accelerants here. Dark Ritual can get us like turn two grief or if we go to like yeah it would, I guess it would only be turn two right oh no you can go turn one swamp dark ritual soaring grief three and then you have two and then you play this and then you play two and then you go grief and then you have a soaring and a, and a swamp out so then next turn you can play island fallen shinobi your grief so dark ritual swamp island soaring grief fallen shinobi if I get those six cards by turn two that's a turn two Fallen Shinobi. And there's nothing wrong with that. Ooh, Prismatic Vista is interesting. I don't actually feel like we're going to have a ton. I don't like, I don't feel like we're going to have a ton of basics. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I don't know if we're playing Bivouac. Hmm. Fascinating. You think Seal seems interesting. That is fascinating. I was looking at Jace the Mind Sculptor. I think I'm going to go with Jace the Mind Sculptor. I think he's just going to fix our... Bob. I don't think Bob... We have like one, two, three, four, four, four drops, four, five drops, a six drop. I don't think this is necessarily a Bob deck. I just worry Seal might be too slow. Like, I feel like we're not trying to enable big combos. We're just trying to play a bunch of good stuff. Like Treachery, for example. <sighs> Fairy Mastermind actually... Oh, man. <sighs> Treachery is obviously the better card. But I feel like Fairy Mastermind is something we want because we want to be able to... Play. We want cheaper cards and we also want to fall in Shinobi. <sighs> we can also just take Urborg... Or Sacred Foundry. Eh, I don't like Sacred Foundry, though. I want to minimize the number of lands that aren't our main colors. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Fairy Mastermind. I think I just need a cheaper spell. We have so much expensive stuff in this deck. I mean, hopefully we're leaning on Manifold, Dark Ritual, and Soaring for those, but you never know. This is also 24 cards. And now it's funny because we have three white cards to splash, two green cards, and two red cards. Also, Lorien Revealed is pretty good for fixing, too. It gets us Underground Sea, uh, Rafine's Tower. Man, I was really hoping for one more fetch land. Like, I think fetch lands are just taking at such a premium now. could just be hard evidence it's definitely not Ugin we also didn't get Valky which makes me wonder if like bring to light's too cute now uh I don't know of any infinite unctus combos yeah I'll just take hard evidence this is one cut Well, that was the last pack, I believe. I think Fire Islet's probably pretty good here. Yeah, I mean, we don't need playables, so definitely take the, the on-color land, I guess. On-color meaning blue or black.
everything's on color when you try hard enough. I hope I'm trying hard enough. I hope I'm living the dream. Sullivan Library seems very good. Sea Chrome Coast is pretty decent. Especially with Eerolingus, Teferi, and Genesis Engine. So I would take Sylvan Carry at it if I thought we had a chance of... I'm just going to take the land here again because I think we're really good on playables. I mean, turn two Dark Ritual into One Ring is pretty good, right? <sighs> Blooming Marsh. They're just going to keep giving us these lands. Toxic Deluge. Actually, is this a Heart of Kieran deck? What do we have? We have Jace, Teferi, Dak, Oko. Four Planeswalkers. Could also just take Blooming Marsh because it. I think it's just good. Yeah, I'm just going to keep taking lands. If it's an on-color land and it helps our blue-black, like, I think that's just totally fine. Like, getting a Blooming Marsh that just helps us cast him to Tarak on turn two, but then also helps us cast Oko on three seems just fine. Just fine. Oh, uh, Loose Focus is actually pretty decent, and I might even just play it. Hmm. Fascinating. Fascinating. Gotta keep them fascinated. Wow, Spiral of Canal came back? I mean, I don't like playing this many fast lands. I think we have three, Spire Bluff, Sea Chrome, and Blooming Marsh. But honestly, they're two blue and a black. And they splash for white, red, and green. So it's like, it's almost like the perfect, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The perfect storm of fast lands for us. Yeah, I could see cutting Spell Pierce and boarding it in. That is a late Nissa. Also a fairly late Zerda. Thank you. Oh, Poner God, thank you for the for the for the sub, buddy. Really appreciate it. Always appreciate when you guys choose to use your Twitch Prime subs on me. Give me some of those Bezos bucks, you know. Wow. We just could have had Zerda into Basalt Monolith. <laughs> That's wild. Also infinite mana, in case you guys didn't. This is 25. What did we just take recently? Oh, we did oh, we did take Zerda into Basalt Monolith. I thought we passed the Zerda. I guess we took Zerda into Basalt Monolith. Thank you. Oh, Hablet of Car, thank you for the for the resub, buddy. Just want to say I saw you in the room. Reminded me I needed to stop my subscribe. I hope you draw hope your draft was better. It looks way better than mine did. <laughs> Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, we are we are drafting together. Like friends. I mean, like, we don't play in the same pod, though, so there's no harm in, like, seeing each other's decks. Unless he jumps in the queue with me. <gasps> okay, so what are we taking out? We, we're back at 25. What, did we, what was the last pick? Oh, Lana Werelf. Okay, so, yeah, and I think we were cutting Spell Pierce, possibly. <sighs> Although I do really like Cheap Interaction. Because I think that one of the problems is, like, our spells resolving. So, like, if we can just prevent them from countering friends who draft together raft together I'm also tempted to just cut trinket mage I mean it's cute but like it's under it's a little underpowered because I kind of like both of these to be honest I feel like this is a cool bring to light deck where we definitely have enough mana for uh for bring to light. But like bring to light just being the best card that you need at any given time that costs five or less. 
I mean, like paying five to go get Dak Faden, Teferi, Grief, Jace. How? Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I gotta. I gotta put Bring the Light in here. It just feels good. See, one of the problems is like I feel like once we're able to cast Trinket Mage, like we're just a little too slow already. I'm cute, but underpowered too. <laughs> I would not consider Katie underpowered. Katie's pretty OP. Also, Lorian's more like a one drop anyway. And Lorian can now get Rafine's Tower. Scrub. Nope, that's not a underground. Oh, just, it's still just these two. But like worst case scenario, I just cast them as a man. <sighs> you know, I hate to agree with you about Fallen Shinobi, but I think I do. We have four creatures. One of them is Fallen Shinobi. And I think I'm being blinded by the Fallen Shinobi, like, the the Fallen Shinobi allure. Yeah, I could definitely see putting Spell Pierce just because I do want to have more interaction as well. I don't think we have any removal, and I, I think in hindsight, I actually would have taken uh, Toxic Deluge. Because, like, if they play a creature, like, our answers are, like, bounce it, turn it into an Elk, bounce it <laughs> uh no I don't think him is ambitious most of our lands tap for black like that was one of the main points that I was making about our lands like our, I wanted most of our lands to tap for either blue or black as those are our main colors and I can't actually even see us playing any any non-blue or black basics plus we have mox diamond so Uh, you can just cast it, but I've never seen that done, so I actually don't know if Magic Online will allow you to do that. Alright, so actually, before we do this, let's bring all of these down. No. Let's do this. Oh, this is going to be a nightmare. Are you ready for this this sorting? Uh, actually, that wasn't, that wasn't too bad. Okay. Um, yeah, that's actually not terrible. Okay, so. Yeah, this is not, you know, that's not, not as bad as I was expecting. I, I might even, like, I can even see bringing in hard evidence. Okay, so blue sources. White, actually, we'll start with white. What the hell? One, two, three, four white sources for three white cards. I can see possibly adding one planes for that. But then again, like, we can search for it. Let's also, like, Lorien Revealed is also a way to get um, Rafine's Tower, which is a white source. Two, three, four. We'll stick with zero for now. Because, like, we also don't need two of these until at least turn four. Uh, blue sources, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine blue sources. That... That seems fine with me. Black sources. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine, nine. Okay. Red sources. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's plenty. <laughs> Green sources. We have one, two, three. Again, that seems fine. We do have one more white source than green sources. Maybe we just do add the planes. Four, five. Oh, we also get one more, actually. This is only five. And we get six lands. So we could just add another blue, which I actually feel okay with. We could also just add another green. This gives us nine, nine, like, what was it, seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six red and then four of each of green and white. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, this is actually four white sources without without a planes. I actually think we just go one more of each. And that's 10, 10, and then a bunch of splashes that work really well. Yeah, that seems fine. The problem is I don't want to awkwardly draw like, I don't want to have like, 
forest planes in my opening hand and just not be able to cast anything. Like, we're splashing for, like, five total cards. Six total cards. And, like, most of the lands in our deck um, facilitate that kind of splash. So I think this deck looks pretty sweet. Um, let's cancel this really quick because I want to be able to... <laughs> I wanted to make sure I can bring, I, like, I know what I can bring to light, so I know exactly what I'm getting. Yeah, let's do, oh, also, yeah, let's do the lands, too. Let's not be silly. Bring this up. Yeah, okay. New. I'm going to do the sideboard as well, just so I know what I have in there. Okay, whole deck, got it. Now we can play. Now you're playing with power. All right, we're on the play. And we got a soul ring in our opening hand? No, just kidding. We got the other ring. This hand's great, actually. Turn one, currency converter. Turn two, this guy. Turn th Wow, this is a really good hand. If we can top deck like a soul ring, that's pretty good. Then we get to turn two Palantir, turn three. But I don't know anything about that. Plus, we have quite a few discard outlets in the deck between Genesis Engine, Dak Faden, Currency Converter. So it's it's likely like if we don't hit the cards like the, the mana we're looking for, we can just discard some some things, you know. Oh, that guy's interesting. Not gonna play that yet, though. Oh, Oral, what's going on, buddy? I didn't even recognize your name, obviously, because you changed it. Now it's Beaver Titan. That's Beaver Titan to you, buddy. Yeah, I think we're just playing this. Look, it's a cheap creature you can ninjutsu. Okay, listen. If you're going to be like this, you might as well just leave. I think it's still Palantir here. It could play Underground Sea, Mox Diamond, Discard Proving Ground to one ring. I kind of like one ring, right? That's going to draw us a lot of cards. Do we have a way to get rid of our own one ring? We can turn it into an elk, actually, or we can bounce it with Teferi. Ah, those are actually pretty good answers. Yeah, we're just going to one ring here. Oh, look at that. And we can actually get a get a thing under there. That's pretty nice. <laughs> I'm also not going to draw here in case they have him to Torok or Mind Twist. I'll draw at the end of their turn because I don't like we're not going to be able to play anything else. So there's no reason to put extra cards in our hand when they can be discarded from a double black start. All right, and Sure. Uh, no, I will not pay. Okay. Okay. Draw two. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, yeah, all right. That's that's pretty decent. Black, black, and then oh yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Um, so here's the question: Do we think they have cards that benefit being discarded? I guess we're gonna find out, huh? They may be looking for a discard outlet, and we might just be helping them. There's a gristle brand. Yeah, we just made a mistake, didn't we? Uh. The Lightning Greaves and the Double Black were, were not ideal. I am tempted to turn this into an Elk, though. Reason being, I don't want them to equip Gristlebrand, and if they reanimate, then we can make Gristlebrand an Elk as well. So let's do that. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. No, no attacking with Gristlebrand, please. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's pretty good. That's unfortunate. We've made a terrible mistake. Well, they are going to combat. They do only have three cards in hand. That's gotta be something, right? Oh, they just passed the turn. We live to fight another day. Genesis engine, eh? That's pretty decent. Huh. Well, let's draw our three cards, I guess. <laughs> oh, bring to light. Bring to light. What does that do for us? What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Bring to light. Let's look at our deck, I guess. Uh, we can go get a grief. That seems pretty good. So we can go white, black, Blue. It does get time warp, but without anything to do with a time warp, I feel like it's not the best. I'd rather just get grief and see what they have in their hand. Hello? Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Love you, babe. Love you. Katie's going to bed. <laughs> all right. So this is four. I think we bring to light, right? We can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Pay zero, four colors, sure. Oh, wow, they just auto-resolved. Okay, that's good. Cast. Oh, yeah, they're just f 6 here. Oh, wow, okay. That's fascinating. Um, Inferno Titan and Ulamog. I think we're just taking bone shards here. Oh, actually, taking Ulamog seems pretty decent because it shuffles their graveyard. And then we don't, I think Inferno Titans, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty decent. Um, Beaver Titan, thank you for the gift for the sub, buddy. Really appreciate it. Oh. I probably just call you Oral from now on. I don't need to call you Beaver Titan anymore. Uh, yeah, we're just going to play Rafine's Tower here, I think. We can't do anything with the mana, right? We can make a guy with this and have two. Yeah, let's just play Tower. I think it's better for our for our plans. And we know their hand is Inferno Titan Bone Shards. So they're probably going to... They can discard Inferno Titan to kill Grief. Oh, Faithless Looting. That's pretty good. That's a nice little top decker. Well, I think they're definitely pitching Inferno Titan. That's for sure. We should also make this treasure because, like, just having it on in play... Um, we actually could have made the treasure and then also made that an elk. That probably would have been better. See, we're learning as we go. Because there's so many things going on with this deck. This deck is a, a, a complicated a complicated nightmare. But in like kind of the best way. Like our hand is sweet, our board is sweet. We can turn this into an elk next turn after drawing four cards with it. And we just win the game. Okay, great. <laughs> Feels good. Do you have anything that cares about their graveyard? Not really. Yeah, I'll just submit like this. Our sideboard's pretty uneventful. Uh, 
This is decent, actually. If we can preordain into one more land, it's a turn to Dak or Teferi. They do have big dumb things, that's true. But I think their their odds of reanimating one of those creatures is much better than our odds of casting a fallen shinobi with regular mana and then attacking with it and then not killing it and then stealing one of those creatures. It is the dream. But I like more realistic dreams, like just going turn two deck, turn three Teferi, or flip those, or turn three deck into turn four this guy. They're going to five on the draw, on the play rather. They're going to four on the play. I think this game is not looking great. They got to hit like the perfect four. I bet they will. I'm a greed monster. I mean, like, come on. If I'm not also a greed monster, I don't know what I don't know what I am. No one has ever accused me of not being greedy when it comes to cube drafting. I'm literally playing five colors. <laughs> come on, it's bring to light five colors. Uh, I'm not making excuses. I'm giving reasons. Gristlebrand in the bin. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. I want to keep both of these. No, actually, I don't know if the loose focus is great. But, like, if they go Gristlebrand and we can bounce it... Eh, it's still not... That's not really... I think we do want to keep both of these. Put on top, put on top, play this, pitch island. See, this is where Spell Pierce would be fantastic. I would have definitely, if it was a Spell Pierce instead of a loose focus, I would have just kept it straight on top. And Because if they can go black mana, oh my god, really? Really? No. Okay. I actually think hitting this would have been better. Interesting. They have one card in hand now. Hmm. Yeah, it's Teferi Plus because I want to get something on the board. And I don't think... If they didn't have it last turn, I'm giving them one turn to draw it. I don't think they did. <laughs> C says. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Fascinating. I think we have to try to hit lands here. Okay, we hit a land. I can pitch Time Warp and probably Jace. Actually, Jace is pretty good, and we can lock them out. We'll say Genesis Engine and Time Warp. All right. I mean, we're giving them one more turn, and then we're probably just keeping up loose focus. <laughs> Did we give them too many? No, okay, that's fine. It's unfortunate Teferi does not have an ultimate. And that there are zero other permanents that we can target. Wheel of Fortune, Lightning Greaves. I'm really surprised they didn't Wheel of Fortune there. That's interesting. You have two cards in hand. I guess they don't want to give us cards, but still... Him to Torok. The problem is if they kept reanimate spell as their last card, 
and then we just go to like Jason, look at their top. It's like, okay, but then you get Gristle Brand back and you get to draw 500 cards. So I'm actually just gonna, this is a good one to pitch. Oh, interesting. Um, Pitch him. I kind of like Kappa Cannoneer as a threat, but I also like Fairy Mastermind if they don't play anything here. Because right now this guy's pretty expensive. And just do this, I guess. All right. I'm going to pass here with Loose Focus up. I think I think if we just lose Focus, their reanimate spell, it's pretty much game over. Huh. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, and this guy loots too. That's pretty good. These lands are very good. Who are you attacking? Dak Faden, sure. I'm gonna Fairy Mastermind if they want a discard to draw. That's fine, I get to draw too then. Not two cards, but I, I get to draw as well. And if I wait until they decide, then the trigger's already resolving. So, yep, cool. Oh, that's, that's good. Because that also means we can, if we draw a land, we can keep up a counterspell. Although they are getting more land. Hmm. Fiend Sour and Dark Ritual. Ooh, what does that do for us? Not much. We can go three black, blue, blue, and still keep up Spell Pierce. I feel like getting Jace down is pretty important. I feel like I'm giving them a lot of turns, but like... As soon as we stop giving them turns, they gristle brand, so. Whatever that means. Hmm. Like, the problem is, most reanimate spells cost one or two. So, Spell Pierce is actually not as good currently. So, that's an easy pitch. <sighs> I want to play the Rafine's Tower. I think it's actually... One, two... This is only for three, but that can get Oko. Which still seems good, and this just gets better over time. I think it's Dark Ritual Spell Pierce. Play this. Do that. Also, being able to bring to light on their turn is pretty good. And if we don't have to counter anything, we'll just both, I'll draw two and you can draw one. So that's fine as well. Yeah, this seems good. We can also counter for six. So lose, lose focus. The scalability of lose focus is pretty nice. Also, if they get deck low enough, we can just bounce our own deck. No, you cannot bounce Planeswalkers. I made that up. Yeah, that seems good. Now we have four. Haunted Ridge. All right. I mean, we have plenty of cards to discard here, so... Oh, Palantir. Let's get rid of Swamp. Probably Palantir. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We'll have six mana here. Fascinating. I can see Bring to Light for time, time Warp here. And then we're just getting really close to fourth Eorlingus. So get rid of Swamp. Probably Fiery Islet as well. Let's play the Ridge. So this is what? 
white, red, green, blue. We can't get, uh, we actually need one more color to get, to get time warp. I don't think we play Palantir, one, two, three, then we have three mana up so we can lose focus for four. But if they go land, animate dead, like I just don't think it's worth it. Like, I think we're in good shape here. Oh, we did discard time warp. That was a while ago. That was a while ago. We can get one ring. One ring's pretty good. We can get grief to see what they have next turn. Oh, we can actually do that EOT even. Oh, actually, bring to light here for something for four seems pretty good. Okay. What can we get? We can get an Oko at instant speed. Let's see if they're looting. Looting and tooting. Yeah, I'm actually like, I mean, I think Dak is pretty much. Done his job. Uh, let's go green. Actually, I don't. Uh, with four cards in hand, I'm reluctant to do it now. I think we're going to do it EOT. If they end up with like two spells, I don't know. If they have like reanimate something else, I don't know. I'm sure they're going to play a land here. I'm playing far too conservative, but seeing Gristlebrand in the graveyard is, uh, it's like put the, put the fear in me here. So green, blue, white, black, done. Emrakul Bone Shards. Inquisition and show and tell. <sighs> so they just need a blue for this, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just taking the show and tell, I guess. Okay, let's play Scrubland. Black one, black two. Inquisition, Bone Shards, Emrakul. I think we're just taking the Emrakul. It shuffles their whole graveyard so the reanimate cards suck. And also it makes it so if they have like sneak attack or through the breach, it does nothing. So <laughs> that seems good. Uh... <laughs> Uh, if they sneak attack it or through the breach it though, it's bouncing it is not really gonna gonna do what we want it to do. With eleven cards, yeah, no, we have plenty of lands to discard here. We can go to nine. I'm totally fine with that. Lorian revealed. Fascinating. Alright. Well. They're at eleven, and we have five damage on board. This Jace the Mind Sculptor is sitting here. It's kind of funny. Oh yeah, crack that guy. So we know Bone Shards, Inquisition, and one other card. Yeah, let us let, let us draw. Everything is helping us draw. <laughs> Are they going to Wheel of Fortune? Did they just hit Wheel of Fortune? Because that's hilarious with Luz. Oh, they're just gonna concede. That was interesting. All right, well, that was a that was a match, all right. <laughs> I 
We are not putting Fallen Shinobi in. It is not a fit. I do want to. However, my desire to win outweighs my desire to have Fallen Shinobi stuck in my hand unimpressively. I know it's less fun, but... Win, Obi. <laughs> okay. <sighs> yeah, that's pretty good. I will keep this hand. That's cute. Manifold key's cute. Oh, big time warp. Uh, let's go Soli. Soli McRingerson into a Mana McVolterson. I'll have to mana burn for one, as the kids say. Oh, they didn't do anything. All right, N? No. Well, unfortunately, we did not do anything either. I do kind of want to get Rafine's Tower. It gives us everything but red. And I think with our current situation, double blue is preferred. That last one was dedicated to Lil Boofy and his new Christmas album, The Rat Express. <laughs> That sounds about right. Let's preordain here. Teferi, eh? Well, I don't want to scrub land. I will keep a Teferi, though. And, you know, maybe next turn is the time. Oh, they're just not playing a land or doing anything. Fascinating. Ooh -wee. One, two, three, four. This guy... Okay, that resolved. Bounce that guy. Do I just play a Grief? I cannot. I will play a Palantir, though. They cannot counter it. Sounds good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. We can play both of these next turn. Okie dokie. Um, put it on top. Put that on top as well. We'll take both. If you want to put Lorien Revealed in there and take five, totally fine. I wanted the currency converter anyway, because that is exactly 10 mana. So, you know. Oh, there we go. I get a planes. That's good. There you go. Tefri giving you the feeling that like you can do anything you want on your turn and they can't respond to it is just insane. Like, you just have no fear. It's it, Teferi puts you in fearless mode. And even if you plus Teferi and then time warp on their turn, they can't counter it. Uh, no. There's that currency converter we were looking for. One, two, three. Good old Grizzy. Grizzyf. Show me your entire hand. Oh, what? Oh, you're just like an aggressive deck. You have two green cards. Esper mana. <laughs> what is that about? What's the deal with the Esper mana? Hmm. Palantir of Orthanc. What in the earth is this hand? I don't care about Scale Lord. I'm pretty sure it's either Gideon or Jar. That's weird.
taking Jar here. I'm going to plus this guy. Okay, so we know they can't do anything. I mean, this is a hell of a board we have. Yep. Um, bottom of this, top of this. Oh my god, they just took a million damage from Jason Kappa Canada. They just took ten. <laughs> oh my god, the greed, my man. I will not be untapping this guy. So you're just almost dead on board? That's wild to me. Plus this guy. I mean, we'll just add a one ring to the board. <laughs> it's like, oh lord. Draw a card. Dak fade and steal your manifold key, I guess. Untap our manifold. <laughs> Okie dokie. Play a land. Untap an artifact. Or we can untap one ring, actually, and draw two more cards. I don't think we need them, I'll be honest with you. We've done this, we've done this. Oh, we could have also untapped soul ring just to activate currency converter, but we don't have a creature. Or a, a card to discard, so. My, my assumption is that they will give us whatever card is on top. And that card will kill them. Nice. <laughs> they took 15 damage off of Palantir. <laughs> That's an Emrakul's worth of damage. Yeah, get, get that perfect info. But we can't be targeted because we have the One Ring, so that doesn't work. So... That's the end, right? <sighs> like, I don't even have to do anything here. We're just going to attack with grief because they we know we know they drew this guy. They don't need to see fourth year Olingus. Even though they tried so hard to do so. Whether this deck is good or not, it is sweet. <laughs> I am enjoying it. They aren't worth our lingus. No, you gotta save the lingus, you know? You gotta earn the lingus. You can't just be... You can't just be giving it out. Listen, buddy. Okay, this is a this is a keeperino if I ever saw one. This is a turn two Teferi. Sick beats. Just the way Doug Funny made him. Oh, it's also a turn two Genesis engine. That's cool. Uh can I do anything with this? No. Unfortunately, Palantir costs three. See, this is one of those games, this is one of those those drafts where you just keep drawing your good cards. But the whole deck is good cards, really. So, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, I think we play Palantir, keep up Spell Pierce here. That seems like it's pretty good. Didn't matter. <laughs> All right. Well, we still get to keep Spell Pierce up. So. Um... I'm going to put this on top and then this on top of that. Hopefully they'll mill the, the swamp and then we can just get the underground sea. I'm pretty sure you always mill the early stuff. Like the first two things you're always going to mill. What? 
turn two sacrifice your waterlogged grove? What in the earth, man? Sylvan carry out? Tarmogoyf. I am so confused right now. I mean, now we get underground and still get to keep up spell pierce, so that's pretty good. One, two, three. I have, I'm confused. Look at all our drawing engines. If there was a card that said whenever you draw a card, opponent loses one or two life, they'd be dead. Oh, Manifold Island, I'm gonna bottom both of these. I don't think they're gonna give either one of us, either one of them to us. Oh, good, they just took eight <laughs> from one ring and, uh, and grief. Okie dokie. So next turn, we can actually keep up Spell Pierce. If they play something, we'll just take three, and then we can... Uh, we can loot with Genesis Engine if they don't play anything. We can Spell Pierce, so that's pretty good. Also, I'm, I'm definitely planning on Tefri bouncing their guy. Mm, sure. I think we just pitch Proving Ground here. We don't have a red, but I don't think we need Dak Faden terribly here. And I'd rather keep Dak in case we draw another red. So. Also, every every land we hit is, uh, is him to Torok mana. All right, so we're going to do one of these jobbies. Oh dear. What are we pitching here? Probably Lorien revealed. Is there a sorcery in the yard? So we're going to have one, two, three. One, two, three, four. We're going to have five mana. Well, I do want to keep up spell appears. Unfortunately, there's too many color commitments. Are they worth the lingus now, father? Yes, my son. Uh, we have artifact, land, and creature in the graveyard. So whatever we pitch, it's gonna... It's gonna grow the goif. But I think that's fine. I don't think that matters. I want to keep ritual for lingus. I don't think Lorian Revealed gets a red, because I think our reds are restricted to uh, Proving Ground. So I think we can actually pitch Lorien and be fine here. Uh, how can Lorien get red? I don't think that's correct. No, we have no red we can get with Lorien. Tarmogoyf's getting big. He's a big boy. What's a drive rum? <laughs> what are you even saying right now? Uh, bounce this sweet gentleman. Oh, there's a red. I do wish we played this this turn. I feel silly now, but that's okay. Eventually the Lingus will get them. Uh, that's also a red. So, I want to put both of these on top. They're both good. I don't, whatever you want to do. Oh, he just gave me the Haunted Ridge. 
Haunted Ridge next turn is how much damage is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's Lingus for seven. That's got to be death, right? I'm trying to get these switches off these arcade buttons. My hands are sweaty. Mom's spaghetti, though, you know? Evolve Sleeper. Sure. I don't think they actually have non-creature spells in their deck. Sure. And now Goyf, right? Now you're Goyfin? You're not, you're not Goyfin. Uh, block. Easiest block that's ever existed. Now you're Goyfin. There he is. There's your son. Sure. Do I have anything to do at the end of the turn? Yes, I do. No, I don't. I didn't. I, dang it, I didn't plus Teferi. Isn't that sad? All right, well, we'll plus him now. So if I go, th if I do this for seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven. They block two, so five gets through, and then this one gets through. We're one shy of just killing them. Do we wait one turn? Do we keep a bunch of guys back? Who can say? You know, who can really say? What I do know is we're playing Haunted Ridge. That's for sure. One, one, two, three with Dark Ritual. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We make seven guys. They block two, so five get through. That's ten damage, and then a pilot gets through. I mean, that still just kills them, right? They have to block. How does this not kill them, right? You know what I'm saying? And honestly, they might just concede here. It's a lot of damage. And we become the monarch. Come on. They have to block all of these. So we lose two and they lose their evolved sleeper. And they go to one. So we're drawing off Palantir. We're drawing off... This feels fine. Like, if they can't even... They can't even Toxic Deluge, right? Because... Draw a card. Palantir. Okay, we just... <laughs> we just win the game, I guess. They were like, you know what? I am at one life. I'll concede. I'll just give it to you. This deck has been sweet. A little bit, a little bit on the greedy side, but I think it worked out for us, you know. All right. If you don't play Shinobi, you'll bring dishonor on your family. We're gonna have to time audio ethic out. I think he's I think he's glitching out. This seems good. I'm okay with this hand. Lorian Revealed gets us um like a Rafine's Tower next turn to play Teferi on three. We get to keep up spell pierce. Preordain gets to look for some pretty boys. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, Mana Valtteri. Hmm, I see. Yeah, I'll just vault here. I don't think they're going to play whatever they found on turn two. 
let it be known that today, December 30th, 2023, the year of our lingus that we drafted a cool deck. Let it be known. Okay, well, you're kind of a kind of a doo-doo head. That was not very cash money of you. The one ring is pretty cash money though. Especially if we hit a land. Oh baby. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Ooh, that's a bingo. Oh, they couldn't draw off Palantir because we have protection and they can't choose an opponent. That's that's pretty sweet. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, boy oh boy. Um How much mana does this give us? We want a Mox Diamond here, I think. Pitch that. Pitch black for soul ring. One, two, three. Teferi. Bounce your stupid thing. And then we can grief you next turn. Two, one, two, black, black. Well, then we get to keep up preordain and spell pierce going into the next turn. You got it. Uh, have them draw cards. Sure, you can just draw the cards. I don't care. Like I'm taking enough damage between one ring and mana vault that uh, I don't really want to die to that. Oh, is that that's interesting. All right, well, we want to hit lands. That's actually insanely good. Do we just ear lingus here? Do we ear lingus and keep up spell pierce and preordain? Yes, I believe we do. Red, black, ritual, lingus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Are we doing cool stuff? Yes, yes we are. I will also draw a card at the end of my turn. <laughs> oh Lord, look at this board state, man. <laughs> Turns out Lord of the Rings was a good set. You got it, deal. And good game. No. Interesting. Are you're not what? Uh okay. Uh fascinating. Uh yeah, draw your card. <laughs> I have Teferi. <laughs> what? I mean like were they it makes me think they're like, maybe I can get Emrakul on the top and deal them fifteen. I have no idea. That was pretty good. Kappa Cannoneer has not been not been doing his job here. Now he's gonna show up on our opening hand and it's gonna be real sad because we just we just talk shit about him. Did someone call me? Is that a turtle? Oh, this hand is fantastic. I mean I would love a You know, I don't know. I don't know what we'd love here. I think we're definitely getting Rafine's Tower, though. Sure. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> it's a good hand. It's a good hand. We have all the colors we need. You're probably taking Tefri, I imagine. That's okay. Okay. 
we're getting Rafine's Tower because actually, so the problem is if we get Scrubland, we don't have a blue. And if we get Underground Sea, we don't have a white. So Rafine's Tower, as much as I would like to play turn one soul ring or look for look for a turn one soul ring um i feel like rafine's tower is the play here because it gives us all of our colors that we really need oh what's going on it's a turtle warrior that's fantastic here comes him to torok no him to torok yield until that end step then Let's get that tower. I hit okay. Did you not like that I hit okay? <sighs> I actually don't know if I want either of these. We don't have a second blue for Jace. Lose focus might be decent, but I feel like our, our turns are pretty occupied and this gets us closer to better cards. Just gonna go Ridge into Faden. They're just not doing anything. This is very strange. I actually kind of think I want to just him to Torok them. I don't think Dak does much here. God, please don't have a creature that you're dying to discard. Two removal spells. <laughs> Two Planeswalker removal spells. Seems good. And you just took two of my good cards as well. All right, well. Okay. Oh, that's good next turn, okay. Or we can just play Kappa Cannoneer, but I don't know if that's worth sacrificing drawing two cards, but I guess we still just get to draw the cards in a future turn, right? Yeah, we're just gonna play Grief here. <sighs> or we can just play fourth Irolingus. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna fourth Irolingus here. Like they have nothing on the board and if they damnation, we still get to keep the monarchy. So like, fine. Like, if fourth ends up winning, if fourth was our splash that put us into all five colors, and it's two off colors, and it ends up winning us, like, the majority of our games, great. <laughs> More power to it. One, two, three, four. Reanimate Liliana Shallow Grave. I'm taking Liliana, because then you don't have anything to discard the big cards you draw with. And I guess you have one turn now? So I guess they are a reanimate deck? That's weird. We could Dark Ritual Palantir here. Sure, why not? Palantir, Swamp, and Currency Converter. <laughs> Play all the things. Choose an opponent. There's only one. Uh, bottom that, put this on the top, see if they hit it and they take it, they go to one. Sure. They're never doing that. Four to five, see what happens when I get here. <laughs> yep, sure. So your hand is, you can get a Kappa Cannoneer or a Fairy Mastermind, but you can't even cast Reanimate, it'll kill you. Shallow Grave doesn't do it, so. Thank you. Oh, and this also exiles. It doesn't even, yeah, all right. That was like a 6-0. That was insane. <laughs> What a deck. I'm gonna open this treasure chest for those of you who waited and watched the whole video. You get a little you get a little treasure treat. Let's see if it's any good. Doesn't look very good. 20 play points. Plus a prime speaker and a rivaz of the claw. I like this guy a lot. Not for like competitive play, but he's pretty cool. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you liked this one. This one was a real treat. And uh, I'll see you next time.